Good evening. Uh, my name is Alan, and on behalf of my co-host with Stancia and the, the crew of the show and the uh, staff of KCTV, I'd like to welcome you again to another uh, interesting and 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 wonderful show of bridging heaven and earth. Uh, and uh, tonight's show is really, it's a really powerful show, I think. It's, it's, uh, it's to do with relationships, relationships between people, relationships between people and God. Uh, I guess the, the crux of it this week is that there was a wedding of one of our guests and one of our crew members, and, and the other two guests, we have three guests tonight, were, were uh, participants. and singers and dancers at the wedding and, and with Stancia was I never could figure out exactly what I guess the priest or the the one who married them the minister, the minister is what it was and uh, so we have some clips of that the actual wedding that you know that took place outside about a week or so ago so it, it should be a really wonderful show so you know stay tuned and just keep your eyes peeled because I think that there are a lot of beautiful things happening tonight so as we usually do at this time, we uh, have Wistancia lead us in, a, uh, in an invocation and then a short meditation. And uh, so that should be wonderful too. So Wistancia. Good evening. So we begin this night with an invocation to the love and to the light within us and all around us and the higher realms and all the divine beings, the angels and the masters who work with us and love us and take care of us, calling the energies into us, into our hearts, inside of us. And we call to our own higher selves, that divine part of us, the I Am Presence, the inner Christ, and we ask to be in union with our Creator. For let this night be an invocation for a union, the union between form and formless, the union between heaven and earth, divine and human, the union of all the kingdoms, animal and plant, angel and elemental, and the human kingdom. And let this night maybe just open us one more step, requesting of Father, Mother, God, the union with each of our hearts, with the one great heart of all, a union with all that we have ever been, all that we are becoming, all that we are now, a union with our past, with our future, and with our wonderful present. And we ask now just to come into that quality of sacredness, calling for sacred space, invoking that feeling in the heart of wanting union, of asking for initiation, for the unity consciousness that is taking us into this time of radiance, of ascension, of transformation. And so maybe together we can all just take a deep breath and call in the light, breathe in the light. Just by our intention, which is so powerful, we can just call the love into us and close our eyes together and just rest. And let all, any healing that needs to take place this night, let it take place now. Thank you. And maybe we can just ground ourselves a little bit and just send our light, our love, down into the body of the earth, asking for union with her body, and send our love, direct our love out through our hands, through our eyes, and through the top of our heads into the heavens, asking for union to be the bridge between heaven and earth. And so we are going to have, as Alan said, a series of clips tonight because we had a sacred wedding ceremony that took place, and I was really grateful to be part of it. And we've had, we have a several little clips that we will show about the wedding, and just lots of, lots of beautiful words and ceremony and song and dance. And so maybe if we're ready, we can 
start with the first clip. And on this day we have an opportunity to each marry that knowledge, that wisdom, and that purity within us as we join with Mira L and Joe Leth in celebration of their sacred marriage ceremony, commemorating their love and union with Source, with Earth, with divine beings, with the I Am Presence, with the oneness of all life, and especially today with each other. This day is an expression of unity and relationship on many levels, and for all of us. It is an opportunity for acceleration, commitment, deep love, transformation, and opening of the heart for guests as well as those who are entering into the sanctity of marriage union. It is a day honoring our relationship to all that is our relationship with ourselves as children of Source, our divine relationships with the Masters and the Angels, our relationship with the oneness of all life within ourselves and each other. And today, we honor the relationship of Mira L. and Jola. Yeah, that's a really beautiful clip. And we have other clips like that. We have, I guess, uh, it takes us right through the ceremony. Uh, so they're going to queue up the second clip, and then we're going to bring the guests out, and we're going to have some dancing. And we have butterflies all over the set. It's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be quite a night. So, uh, yeah, uh, I was privileged to be at the wedding, too. I was uh, shooting some film, which you won't see tonight, because I guess it wasn't as good as the film that our director shot, Michael Morton. And you'll see, he's the one who did all the clips of the video. Uh, that you'll see tonight, and my clips uh, are in my house, so if anybody <laughs> wants to see those, uh, I was just taking another angle. But uh, So we're going to cue that up, and then uh, I guess we'll take you through basically the whole wedding till you know, the I do's, uh, and uh, you know, it should be a, a wonderful experience for everybody. Uh, and let me ask Wistancia a question. Uh, how, how did it feel to be the uh, the minister, minister or the rabbi? I don't, never could. Well, actually, I was ordained as a minister of light and healing by the Council of Light, and it felt it felt truly wonderful. It's a very non-traditional wedding, as as you'll see. It's very non-traditional, and uh, but it's it's real. It's authentic. It's just um, a little bit different than what you're used to seeing, and, and actually. Um, I never really thought that this was going to happen to me. <laughs> so we're ready for the second clip. Let's go right into it now. I request a blessing for this marriage. Let it become an outer expression of the sacred marriage of divine feminine and divine masculine within each one of us. Let this union signify the linking of all that is physical with all that is spiritual, all that is heaven with all that is earth, the human and the divine within us all. May this brother and this sister be joined as a son of God and as a daughter of God. So, welcome back. And we have sitting with us, we have Mir L. The bride, if you, <laughs> the haven't, bride. if you haven't put the two together. Right, and we have uh, the cameraman that's on her tonight is her husband, Joel S. I wish we could get a shot of him, but I don't, I don't know how to do that, so we'll just cancel that. <laughs> anyway, it's really a beautiful romantic story that he's, he's got his focused on her, as he's always focused on her. Anyway, <laughs> maybe... Um, you could just talk to us a little bit about your feelings about that ceremony and just your feelings about sacred relationships. The wedding ceremony is something that we wanted to do as a shared ceremony. And first of all, we wanted it to be sacred and not that all marriages aren't sacred because I believe they are and whatever anyone chooses to do, it's going to be sacred. But. Our primary focus 
was to have God as the focus of our wedding. Mm -hmm. And that we would come together forming almost like a trinity, the two of us with God as the central point. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted someone to officiate at that wedding who had the same feelings, that's why I chose you. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted to share that with our loved ones, with our guests, that they could experience the transformation that takes place whenever you invite spirit into your life, whenever you share your life uh, with the light and when you're dedicated to the light and to that purpose. So that was the purpose for our wedding, being the way, yeah. the way we had it. We thought of the idea of having our guests sit in a circle around us so that we could have a feeling of intimacy in a shared experience. Right. And so we tried that and it was very beautiful. Did you talk to any, any of the guests at the wedding afterwards? Because a lot of them told, yeah. came up to me and told me that they felt like they all got married, like they got married to a part of themselves and they got married to each other and we had the gold ribbon around, right. you know, creating the band and everything. But none of us tried to move into your house. <laughs> right, but n no. <laughs> Not yet. Right, no. right. Um, yeah, everybody had an experience, a special experience. Each one's was individual. Actually, I've had two or three people tell me that they experienced a healing oh, yeah. during the ceremony. Um, and everybody had... I mean, of something specific? I mean... I think of their emotional nature, oh, an opening of the heart center, mm -hmm. because it was a real opening of the heart center. The energy there, the love that was poured forth, everybody there just opened up their hearts and poured forth love. And sitting in the circle as we were, every time I looked at someone, I could just feel this, these waves of love come in. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what everybody was sharing. And so, and it felt safe. Mm -hmm. It felt sacred and it felt really safe so that people felt that they could be in a safe place and open up their hearts and just receive and also to give. I think it was a receiving and giving for most people. Yeah. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about um, your how you came to, to come into this relationship with <laughs> Joe F. What you define a sacred relationship with, how you keep that alive, how you keep that going. Are there things that you do every day together? Do you meditate together? How, what is it that you, how do you act this out? How do you keep this alive like that? First of all, I would say to keep it alive, you need to be able to be sensitive to the guidance of spirit and, and to allow that to change on a daily basis. So that, you know, the idea and the commitment might be there to meditate every day or to spend some time in recognition of God in your life. But that might change from day to day. Mm -hmm. One day it might be in meditation, Another day it might be a walk on the beach. Mm -hmm. But mostly, my experience in this relationship is just living moment to moment, consciously, Which together. Which is a good idea whether you're in a relationship yeah. or not. <laughs> right. Yeah. Did you ever think that you were going to actually no. ever be like on TV talking about sacred relationships? No, because um, I didn't think I was going to have another. Right. Romantic right. relationship. I had. You had been married before. It wasn't what before. you would call a sacred. No. In, in the sense you're talking no. about now. Years ago, I was married before, and for a lot of reasons that a lot of us got married um, when we were young. I don't. I don't even remember now what the expectations were, but the dedication, the life purpose, wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes a sacred relationship. And. Uh, when I met my husband, um, I didn't even want another relationship. I was very happy being alone, being single, doing what I do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want any dis what I call distractions in my life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> relationships, there <it> was. <laughs> relationships can be distracting, you know. Right. And, um, but I had someone come into my life that 
was on the same path and had the same goals. I think whatever your goals are, if they're a shared goal, mm -hmm. if your goals are the same, um, like I say, our path was identical. And I feel that um, that we were brought together, you know, to increase our light because I feel that that when two people share the light, then that light can expand and accelerate a much greater purpose mm -hmm. than just one person can do. Like one in one is eleven more than one in exactly. one is exactly. It just increases the yeah. That's exactly it. And in the week and a half, have you found that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm still a newlywed, but yeah, that's right. true. And we do try to, you know, meditate every day or to, you know, we're busy. We both have jobs and we have really busy lives, but we try to make sure that we're aware of the focus of our life. I've seen the two of you together. I mean, I, you know, we know each other mm -hmm. kind of really well. And I think that it's real special. You have something that's really special. You know, I don't, I don't think everyone's experienced that kind of a relationship. You know, I think people are working at too. it, you know, and I think my, personally I feel like it's because you're already having a relationship in a sense with angels, relationships with the earth, relation, you know, there's so many relationships that we're, we all can have and that you were just ready to, to see the divine in a human. You know, and you were okay. maybe asking for that and, and were you just you got another gift, that? were you? I mean, was I, that like a... Any well, kind of prayer or a loneliness or a No, or I didn't enough? feel incomplete. In fact, as a matter of fact, I think that... <laughs> Don't tell me to feel boring and complete. That would be bad. No, <laughs> I think it's really necessary to feel complete as, right. as a person before, you know, to feel whole yeah. before you can attract to you, you know, that other person. I think that's very important. I don't think that looking for someone else to feel a needy spot is the answer. And I think we have something special too, of course. <laughs> and also, we're we're grateful. I mean, every day we give thanks. You know, we don't ever take anything for granted. And as you'll see with the vows, you know, when we talk about honoring each other, yeah. you know, I think we should do that with all our relationships, with everyone in our life, with our pets. But it's with easy everyone. when you're living with someone, you know. Yeah. Would you say that, that you have to have that feeling of honoring yourself in the sense of like that, that God part of yourself before you can even think about it? I mean, not think about it, but yeah. you know, the, you can, before you can really have the experience of honoring someone else, you have to have had that surrender or that however you would look at it. That's really a good way of putting it because, you know, we were just talking the other day and, I, and it seems to me like you really have to love yourself before you can love another. You have to accept yourself and accept mm -hmm. the being that you are in your wonderful nature and honor that right. before you can have the space to open up to someone else and to offer that. It's in the right. offering that you receive. I mean, that sounds like a platitude, but that's the way it is. <laughs> well, I can see yeah. that. I can see that mirrored in both of you. You know, I don't, I don't see a neediness. You know, and, and I, I know that when I first got married, I just, I just want, you know, part of me just wanted to be married, and part of me felt like I would be left out, you know, if I, if I, it was, there was a lot of fear, there was a lot of just, you know, maybe youth or insecurity or something in there, you know, I didn't even know who I was, I didn't know who I was, you know, and you, I mean, you've been, you've been running the angel meetings, you know, for years at your house, and, you know, it's like, everything that you ever have talked about in these meetings was recognition of who we are, who and what we are. And so you knew that, you know. Knowing you're, yourself. You're working on that. Knowing you, yourself is the key okay, to everything. Can you, can you like help people be familiar with what the angel meetings are? Because yeah. I know you two are familiar yeah. and I've been to yeah, a few. Yeah, we're so. going to get to Okay, well, do you want to do that later? Because we do have a clip now yeah. that, you know, of, of Earth Star at dancing at the wedding. And uh, we could play that now. Is that queued up? Okay, okay, we're ready to go. go. To so let's go to that and then we'll introduce Richard and Earth Star. So let's let's see the clip.
Welcome back. That was exquisite, exquisite dancing and exquisite camera work. <laughs> it was amazing. Actually, we just had an angel come and visit us during the wedding <laughs> and dance all over the place. So I'm sitting here with Richard and Earthstar, and Earthstar is the, was the dancer uh, that you saw, and Richard, they're partners, and they have also a sacred relationship. And they also have a really incredible company called Enchantment Wear, and we are all um, showing some of the enchanting, <laughs> enchanting clothes and rainbows that <laughs> they design. It's real beautiful. And anyway, and he's also a musician, and you'll see him in the other clip that's coming up in about two or three seconds. So, how do you feel? <laughs> How's everything going? It feels pretty yeah. good. We're go um, whenever we're ready, we can start this next clip, but it looks like we're going to have a little bit of time. So maybe you can do a little talking about what it felt like. Can you talk about what it felt like to be moving through that crowd on that, on oh, that wedding day? It was really beautiful. It was, it was just like, it's, it was amazing. They put the special effects on me dancing, and it made me look the way I felt. Because oh. that's how it felt. Yeah. But I've never, it, and it, it looked that way with the way the effects were all blending together and merging with the music and the, the whole feeling there that day was just really beautiful. It was really blissful energy. Yeah. Well, you know, when you were singing, and there were two <coughs> others that were sitting with you, I glanced over and the three of you looked like, sis like really, sisters and brothers. You had the same face, the same look, you know. <laughs> it was really beautiful and also looked totally ageless, like, like could have been a group of eight-year-olds sitting and singing. Right. It, um, was, uh, it was very spontaneous, too. I mean, we didn't really know what we were doing. It was a completely, we just let it happen, you know. And, and it was an incredible feeling, um, you know, playing with, with um, Oceana and uh, Abigail like that. Mm -hmm. You know, just completely a new thing, you know. Well, it was kind of a new thing for all of us, wasn't it? My first yeah. time doing a wedding, the, their first yeah. time having a sacred yeah. relationship. <laughs> <laughs> initiation. Yeah, it was, yeah. like it's the beginning. So let's, let's go to the clip now. If we're ready, are we ready? What is this Richard and Oceana singing? Right. right.
come back and what good advice to be still and listen <laughs> to our heart, to ourselves and to our friends. So maybe you can talk to us a little bit about your sacred relationship, what you've learned about relationships, what it is, that, what are your vows? I know that you were telling me a little bit about the other day of your intention with this relationship. Well, I'm, first of all, I never would have expected to have a sacred relationship. You know, I never thought such a thing was possible, you know, because, you know, there's so many changes that are going on, you know, in day-to-day -day life and within ourselves, you know, different phases that we go through that, I, you know, people always go in different directions after a while, you know, and that was always my experience. Um, where you'd be with someone for a while and you would learn what you need to learn and they would learn what they needed to learn and then you, you try and hang on to it but really it was time to go off and, you know with in different directions. I mean you experienced it almost like uh, karmic relationships where you had things to work out and then yeah, struggle. I think, I think and it was it was like, like that, that yeah. And, and um, with Earth Star it's different. And Oh yeah it's for, it seems to be really different. And How long have you been together? Uh, three and a half years. And it's, it's definitely, um, you know, I never thought it would be possible to have a relationship where, where you could have complete harmony all the time. There's you know? no friction? I <laughs> never. We never have She friction. laughed and you said never. Like, I don't know. No, wait a minute. One tell, time. She'll, one time. She'll tell you a funny you story. You get one time. <laughs> well, one I, time I, in three and a half years One of the things good. I do is I, I cut hair. And uh. I have two pairs of special hair scissors. And one pair, one day, I caught Richard cutting the his his jeans, shorts, to trimming the threads with them. And I got so mad, I was just like, really mad, right? And he was so adorable when I got mad that I forgot why I was mad, <laughs> what I was mad about, and what whatever made me mad, and I forgot for six months. Until six months later, I mean, it was just like, it was so, it just, we turned into just kissing and just blissing out. And then Aww. I found the hair scissors six months later in my drawer, and I went, oh, that's why I was mad <laughs> at that time. And I remembered why I was mad, but. That, that's really the only time I ever got mad. And it was it was kind of like, it was almost cute in a way. Like I got mad and then it was just like, it didn't matter. Because it was like, who, just a stupid pair of hair scissors. What, what's the point of being really mad? I don't think anyway. you're allowed one time to, <laughs> to do that. But what is, you know, what do you, how do you keep it going? I mean, how do you, what do you do? What, is, what are your secrets? Well, I know for me it's a, it's a real day-to-day -day thing and, and um, you know, I just, what it seems to be when I, I wake up and, I, and I'm, I look at Earth Star and, and it's like, I have this, this respect there, which I, I feel, and I always try and recognize that, you know, mm -hmm. like, when, like when we first met. You but know? you'd had relations before, you, somebody said you'd been married twice before? Yeah. yeah. And, and you didn't feel that when you woke up with these other people, or you didn't after a while, or how did um, that, how did, <laughs> what was the difference? It was just, it was just different. It was different. It was, it was different really from the different. beginning, from the first day, would you say? Uh, even from the beginning, yeah. I mean, I, I, I wasn't living such a conscious lifestyle then. I've really, I've really worked on myself in, you know, in the last five or six years to, um, to, to become more conscious of my actions and my thoughts and, and how, I, how I am with, with people generally, you know. Mm. And in a relationship, you specifically, you know, you really have to watch you know, you have to be aware of, of your thoughts and, and you know, and, and what you're saying. Also, what, and not what taking uh, taking um, what's the word? People for granted. For granted. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's really what happens a lot of the time is you get used to being with someone, and you know, it's it's like that. You know, but with How our relationship. Is there anything you do? Is there any like tool or anything well, you yeah, do to keep that appreciation? Well, one thing that what, what I've experienced is we're usually all in karmic relationships with everyone and and you're always working out karma and stuff and and I, I see all this going on around me all the time and and I came just through my re realization and through what I read and studied is that you can either live in a karmic relationship in with everyone in the world and deal with that or you can bless all your relationships in divine grace and when you call that forth and really feel it in yourself and do it as a conscious thing, and mm -hmm. you can't forget, and you can't just take it for granted. You've done it once. Now you're always in divine grace, and it's like daily or weekly or whenever you remember, call forth that divine grace and bless your relationship, your primary relationship. Then you can extend that to to the whole world. Then you enter a state of divine grace, and it's like the karma. It's almost like it melts away. It's like it it's lifted off you the weight of all the 
the burdens of all the stuff. And if you can keep that consciousness in divine grace and keep that blessing, you become a blessing to other people. And you can live in that space of divine grace. And it, it's beautiful. And it's, it's not any religion or any like belief. It's just an experience. And it's real. It's like divine grace is here showering on us at all times. We just have to tap into that grace. And then it, it come, moves through us. What I'm hearing is that you have to work on yourself. You have to love yourself. Right. You loved yourself before you met Richard. Yeah. <laughs> you loved yourself before you met yeah. Earth Star. Yeah. And you loved yourself before you, <laughs> you know, before you yeah. met Joe West. And you know, it's. I think that that's really the answer is like really loving yourself, working on yourself, and then and then seeing what grace brings. You know, and then being not, almost like not being desperate for it, but right. but seeking seeking union or seeking like what we say, oneness of all life. Like seeking that and then seeing if this gift is extended to you, because right. it is a gift. It, when I look at the two of you, or the two of you, I, it looks like a gift. It's really a gift. Not everyone has it. it not everyone it really gets is. the same gift. It really you know? is like a grace, you know. I mean, yeah. it's not something you can make happen. It, it really, it's, it's just something. But you do have to work at it. You do I, have I to know honor for, for me, you know, it was, um, I was on my own for about a year, and, and I decided that I wouldn't get involved in any relationships. You know, I would, I wouldn't put so much of a focus on that, because I think that, you know, we're all too. We're a lot of the time we're all focusing too much on the fact that we need to have a relationship and we need another person to like make us not feel lonely or something. And, and, and we make a lot of compromises to accommodate that. You know, maybe the wrong person. Yeah, we both right. decided we would and, no and longer so it's, compromise. It's good to really good. to really come into yourself. You know, and, and, mm -hmm. and know yourself. You have to feel full. Yeah, full you within can, yourself. Yeah, right. Have a real spiritual core. Right. You know, which right. I feel that. That I that I have, you know, and that I had right. before, and then um, you know, get on with life, you know, and then it's a, the, oh, it is a grace, it's a magic that happens when you mm. meet someone and you do have that mm. harmony. I mean, I, it, it it does blow my mind every day. It really does, you <laughs> it's know. It's really good. Your mind to be blown every <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, it's like well, I can't believe this is happening, but it's it really is happening, you know. Why don't we talk a little bit about the company, and maybe you can get set up to dance. Okay. And. Basically, yes, just take you know, just don't hook the mic and okay. So, you have enchantment wear, and we're wearing it some of it. That's right. And Earth Star is going to be wearing quite a bit of it when she dances. So how did that happen? Well, uh, actually, Earth Star um, began, she began with um, the whole thing, she's been dyeing clothes and. And, the, and doing the butterflies for quite a few years before I met her, mm -hmm. and um. She was, you know, she's quite famous for it. Yeah. And before we met, in fact. She travels around the country. She, yeah, she, you know, she's done that. And um, and then when we got together, um, it really, getting involved in it really brought out my artistic side and creative side, and um, and it really started to rub off on me, you mm -hmm. know. And um, and I just really got into, really got into it in a big way now, you know, where yeah. it's 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 actually. Uh, you know, a real pleasure working every day doing it, you know. And working together as well, you know, we, right. we really, we work together totally, all the time. And, oh, it's um, really enchanting, <laughs> to use the word. It yeah, really is that's, enchanting. That's the, the idea. That's the, the idea of, of what we're trying to create, is, um, is to put enchantment and beauty out there into the world, you know, like color and, and um, more of the magical realms, you know, which tend to be kind of, put on the back burner by most people as being um, whimsical and not something, you know. I do have to ask you a question. I have to ask you a question. When you saw Earth Star the first time, did you think she was an elk or a, a fairy? Does she not epitomize that that incredible look of, a, of that kingdom? She really does, yeah. The, I mean, the first, the first time that we met, um, well, the first time I saw her, actually, uh, I did think that she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> But um, we didn't really meet until uh, probably about a month later, mm -hmm. and that was purely a magical, yeah. you know, thing that happened by chance that we met again. Wonderful. But I, yeah, I really thought that yeah. a true fairy. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I, I see that in her, and the, yeah. and the clothes oh, really yeah. do depict that too, the colors. And so maybe are we are we ready to cue up the music in there? Is the music ready? All right, well let's do some dancing.
You know, it's amazing. Every week, I think that the guest that week is the most incredible guest we've had, and it's really. And then we have somebody else, and I don't know where all these talented people are coming from. Really, it's really been blowing my mind. I mean, we have singers and dancers, and I mean, we got a tremendous number of calls last week about uh, about uh, the the art of Ali and, and Abigail singing, and I'm sure we get a lot of calls this week about this show. It's it's really been incredible. So, wow. Can we talk a little bit about the angel meetings and and the? I, I think of you as a representative of, of the angels and the, the ascended masters, and maybe you could just, because that's how we met. I came to a meeting, and and there you were, and, and maybe you could just talk about your experience with working Thank with you. them. Um, well, I think I've always worked with them. I can't ever remember a time when I didn't feel that I was, but. Um, the last four years, well, since 1991, November 1991, I've been getting together with a group of people that come together for the purpose of expanding their awareness, working with um, not only the human realm, but other realms, mm -hmm. and um, raising their frequency, their vibration, and assisting the planet for healing and whatever needs to be done. And we call this the angel meeting. And we, we meet once a week, and we meditate together, and we focus our intention together, and we sing together, and we share joy together. It's a wonderful experience. I had been told that you were starting to do it every night. Is that? It was. I know it was once well, a week, and then I, I heard from somebody that you were going to try to do it every night. We try to do have a, like a meditation every night right. for a while, but. It was really difficult for us because we both worked and right. we worked different hours and we weren't able to right. really do that. But I've we been only to. been able to consistently do it two days a week for a while. It's, yeah, it's, it was, it's yeah. Any more than that seems that was really a difficult. real stretch. Um, I did want to say at the angel meeting, the information that comes through from the angelic realms and the ascended masters and the beings of light is brought through by the energy of the people that are there. It's not brought through by any one particular person or by myself. It's it's a uh, it's the focus. It's it's the intention of people that come together to to share love. So in that sense, it's even one and one and one and one and you know that the power yeah, just grows that's with it. each. That's it. And um, and so we never know what's going to happen exactly. You know, it's always very beautiful. I think we have also the uh, clip now, which uh, is the vows of the wedding. Right. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I think there's some beautiful, beautiful uh, statements and, and loving experiences. So uh, is it ready to go? Okay. All right. Let's see it then. It's really beautiful. before you with all of the love and the gratitude that our hearts can express for the honor that you have given unto us of coming together in a perfect union so that what will be created here shall be a marriage in the truest sense. My mate is for me, a symbol of my love for all. Each time that I embrace my mate, a ripple of love will go out and resonate in the hearts of the one. I offer unto you the open expression of love and becoming. I choose to honor you all the days of our experience together. I choose to honor you in all dimensions and all time. I choose to experience love and life and light with you.
I choose to honor you all the days of our experience together. I choose to honor you in all dimensions and in all times. I choose to experience love and life and light with you. We choose to nurture that ability within each other to love. We choose to make each moment of our life together a sacred moment. And so we join together in this sacred ceremony and the two shall become one. A uniting of the physical bodies so that the creative force of our beautiful Mother, Father, God may be raised through these physical bodies into the most perfect expression. A uniting of the one heart uniting on all levels, a perfect union. Iva Eliam Masisim In. Amen. Yeah, that's, uh, and we have one more clip uh, of the, uh, the final uh, I do's. And uh, so uh, the whole wedding was just an incredible experience with the singing and the dancing and as everyone was saying, all the energies there. And it was really an incredible experience for me. Now, I wasn't right in the circle because I was outside with the cameras, but I mean, I could feel it. I mean, like the, the whole thing was like vibrating. I actually, I'm surprised. I don't know what the, it looks like on the monitors coming out over the screen, but uh, I, I mean, there was like a vibration, almost a palpable vibration going on. I mean, a I don't, pulsing. Like yeah, a pulsing. pulsing. Yeah. And the dog, the dog was even The part dog of was that. excited, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't a dog, it was one of the people. No, no, <laughs> no, it was not, it was it, was it. Are we ready with the, the next one? You ready with it? Yes, we have a, a really short clip, but we figured we'd, we'd have you in the wedding too with us. Here it comes, all right. In the holy presence of Father, Mother, God, in the company of angels and masters of light and wisdom and all healing, within the Christ light of our higher identities and within the umbrella of the I am presence that contains the wisdom and the love of all the masters and of our creator. Before the great masters who sit before this council of love in this court of love, I now pronounce you wedded in sacred union. It's the blushing bride yeah, right with us. <laughs> I thought we had kept that kiss a little longer. I did the editing on that. I thought we kept it a little longer. You guys must have cut it in there. I don't know what was going on. like it was longer than Now we have the kisses over here. Everybody's <laughs> kissing. The camera uh, people it's are kissing. It's contagious. The audience is kissing. <laughs> and uh, we got quite a kissing going on here tonight. Love is in the air. Maybe right? we should kiss. <laughs> well, that'll take some doing. Every day is Valentine's Day. It's a secret. It's the <laughs> so secret. next week we have Julianne Everett, and she is an international ascension teacher. She travels all over the world and teaches ascension, which is raising your energy or vibration into a higher rate so that you can bring your body as well as all of your subtle bodies into a higher dimension. And so we're, those energies are pouring into the earth at this time. and. And she teaches us, and she'll probably run through some little um, exercises in how to increase the vibratory rate. Any singers and dancers? Or? I don't know. I don't know. No not yet, scheduled. but we'll see. So any singers and dancers out there who want to <laughs> come on, we've been having incredible talent. So. Maybe you'll yeah, have to a sing call. a song, Alan. I sang once. That was, that was the only negative calls we got about the show. When I sang a couple of bars, they asked, what the? That country tune. Well, what was that? Maybe you'll sing opera next week. Yeah, I'll do opera next week. Anyway, so, uh, God bless all of you. May the blessings just, be upon you, really. We'd just like to thank everybody for you know coming on the show. It was really exciting for us. And thank you know, you. I got through yeah. almost the whole thank show you. and I was saying excited. Yeah. Yeah. So, so thank you thank all. You. Good night, everybody. Thank you, crew. Good night. Good Thanks, night. everybody. Good night. God bless.